It's okay. okay. We'll do it quick. Just 20 questions, that's it. Good evening, everyone. And uh, welcome. <laughs> welcome back to our Tanya series. We have uh, gone through the 20th chapter last week. But I feel that we need to go over it again because chapter 20 and 21 are not easy chapters. al Rebbe goes into a very esoteric, if you will, deep subject of Achdut Hashem, which means the unity and oneness of Hashem. And the truth is that the, the topic of Achdus Hashem, he, he talks about in what later became the second section of Tanya, known as Shar HaYichud Amuna, the portal of oneness and faith. And over there, in the beginning of chapters, he discusses this very topic of Achdus Hashem, the oneness and unity of Hashem. And he says over there that what does Achdus Hashem mean? Then not that there is no two gods, that's obvious. But there's nothing, but there's, that was, that would, that's what Echad we usually mean. There's one God, not two. But that doesn't mean that there is nothing else in this world. Obviously, there's a lot of other things in this world. There's no other God, but there's tables, there's chairs, there's people, there's angels, there's worlds, there's all kinds of things. But the true meaning of Achdus Hashem, which we usually, usually in Hebrew would use the word for that, would mean Yichud. Yochid, sorry, Yochid. Yochid means he's the only. Hashem is the only existing that exists. How, I mean, how, but the question is, how could you say such a thing? We, I'm talking to you now and you're listening to me now. There's a room, there's a table, there's coffee, there's a tanya, there's a computer. The al explains in Hasidus in general, there's gives there's a, a good example for this. In, in the Al-Tarebis, in the second, by the way, the second uh, section of Tanya was going to be first, the first section. He meant to start the Tanya with that. And this, these 53 chapters were meant to be the second section of Tanya. So some of the things that he says in the second section, he relies on those, he re, when he, talks about here in 20 and 21 to some degree he relies on what he already said in the portal of unity and the faith the second section because that was going to be the first section okay why it became the first second section is a separate issue but over there Dal Terebe says that the whole creation of the world could never in other words if God's What's the creation? Creation happened by God saying, let there be a firmament, let there be trees, let there be a sun, a moon, stars, galaxies, let there be all this. He said those words, right? So it's not the pshat, it's not the meaning is that once he said it, it's there. It's not the case. If Hashem would stop saying the word, let there be a firmament, if he would stop saying, let there be trees, if he would stop saying, let there be a sun and the sun and the moon, there would be no sun and the moon. Not only would stop it, it would be as if it was never there. It would go back to the way it was. To the, 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 the existence and the re- reality would go revert back to the way it was before the world was created to begin with. In other words, the creation has to be a continuous creation. If God stops speaking the world into creation, it's no it's no longer. It's period, it's over. And because of that, because of that, the creation as an existence is not a real one. Let me give you an example for this. 
Let me give you an example for this. Imagine you take a ball and you have a lot of strength in your arm and you can throw a ball upwards that it should fly 500 feet high. Pretty good, right? Imagine you could take a big ball like this and throw it a thousand feet in the air. Even more strength. Wow, that's a real strong guy. So let's say a, a, a ball, you see a ball flying in the air. How does it fly up and not down? Gravity would pull it down. Na na the natural, rea the, na the nature of it is that it should fall down, not fall, good fly up. Suddenly the ball became like a, like a beer, like a, like a bird. It's flying up. The flying ball. If you see a ball flying upwards, you say, wow, look, I never saw such a ball, a ball fly, a flying ball. Or would you say the ball is not a flying ball at all? The flying reality of that ball is not real. There is no such thing as a flying ball. That ball did not become a flying ball. But it's flying. <laughs> but it is going upward. It's only going upwards. The fact that it's going upwards is only in a manifestation or an expression of some human being's very strong power in his hand that is able to carry that ball upward. The minute the power of that hand finishes, it exhausted itself, the ball comes right back down to the way it was before, right? Correct? In other words, it's, therefore, even when it's flying, it didn't assume an, an, exist, an existence of a flying ball. That's because of gravity. But if you go right, what I'm trying to my point is, balls. When the only reason the ball is going upwards has nothing to do with the ball itself. But what is the unreality of our perception of what the ball is? No. Where we're saying that's a flying ball. It's not. It's you're not. not you would ball. never say that's a flying ball. I know. You would never say, wow, the ball became a flying ball. No, you would say someone is carrying that ball up. Someone's power of his hand is, is carrying it up. So why is that unreal? It, it's not unreal. The ball is real. The fact that it is able to fly upwards has nothing to do with the ball, and the ball has no existence of flying in it. It has no existence of a flying aspect to it. It's only the hand that carries it. It's only the power of the hand that threw it up and it's flying as long as there's a power pushing it up. The minute the power that stops pushing it up finishes, exhausts itself, it's coming right back down. It's the, the, the ball didn't become an existence. The, of, 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 the, the flying aspect of that's happening over here didn't become part of the ball's existence. This is only in Earth, right? I'm giving you an example of here. It's only in the Earth, no, because if you go to space... I'm giving you an example here. Okay. When you say the world exists, why does the world exist? The nature of reality is, reality as it is, is what? God. That's it. There's nothing else. That's the way the world was before. There's only God, period. Suddenly God, like the force of the hand that keeps, that created, that brought this thing into existence, and it's continuously keeping it in existence, like the power of the hand, that carries the ball upward. As long as the power is there, it's flying upward. The second the power is not there anymore, it goes back down. So what the whole world's existence, the very existence of the world, is what? The power of the hand, the power of God's word. So does the world take on existence as a real thing? No. It's, in other words, it's like the ball flying. The ball exists, but the flying aspect of the ball doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It's not a, it's not a, there's nothing there that you could say. The whole thing is traced back to the hand, to the person who pushed it. it. has nothing to do with the ball itself. The ball's flying is not a reality. Balls don't fly. There are hands, there are people that have power in their hand that they can thrust things upward and that's why this thing as long as the power of the hand thrusts it up it flies up it goes up but it doesn't it's not a, it's not a thing that flies up there's a power of a hand that's carrying it that's what it is the same thing with the world there's no existence over here in a, in in the sense that it really does exist because 
Now suddenly it wasn't, and now it is. Now it isn't either. The only thing that is, is the Pekeach Abdibur. It's the power of speech that God is thrusting it upwards like the ball. Or into existence. No, let's... It's not only dependent. It's more than dependent. It's more than dependent. It doesn't depend. It, it, the ball doesn't... Ex- so the ball is not a flying ball. There's no such thing as that. Correct. Yeah. But it, it was a flying ball that was up. There, there was a hand that was carrying it upwards. The power of a hand that was carrying it upwards. Right. So right. While it lasted, it existed. No, it doesn't exist as a flying ball. That's my point. You have to differentiate between two things. It did not assume a new existence, a new reality. Oh, now, yesterday, there was no such a thing as a flying ball. And now balls fly because someone made it fly. No, balls don't fly. Now balls don't fly either. There are there is power that carries balls up that could happen as long as the power is there it's had, then it's 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 thro- pushing it up and as long as the power is not it's not pushing it up but while it's pushing it up there's no suddenly a flying ball the balls don't fly. So what you're saying is that the universe is constantly the whole world in existence yeah because of God is all is not only it's in other words the, by the ball. The man is not creating a ball. The man is only creating the idea that it's going on. Oh, but by Hashem, the whole existence is only because of his word. Hold on, hold on. That means that you don't, your existence is completely as if not. It's really not in the eyes of Hashem. When you say dependent, it means I exist, and my only existence is because I'm able to be brought into existence by God. When your whole existence is God's word, that means while you exist, and and the minute the word is out, it's over, it's not, it's it's not, it's as if it never happened. That means even when it's there, it's not existence on its own. It's not an existence. It's an it's it's Hashem creates brings something from nothing into to being like the ball is flying, but the, the ball didn't assume such an all of a sudden a new status of a ball that flies. It doesn't assume such a new status. It happens to be going upwards because someone's pushing it upwards. It's the same thing with the world. The world exists is an illusion, not an illusion. I want to be careful with my words. It's not an illusion. Temporary. No, 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 not, temporary. not temporary. Temporary means you exist temporary. I'm talking about even while it's here. Not, don't get confused with temporary. Temporary is the wrong word for it. It doesn't assume an existence of its own. A real existence, in other words. Let's see, God speaks. Let's say God speaks that ball into existence. Yeah. And then God speaks that ball flying through the air because some man threw it up in the air. Yeah. I think to, to make this intelligible in the modern world, everything is in motion. Nothing is the same from second to second. God continuously speaks whatever it is we're talking about in the creation, and it's always changing, and which is and which is which is. We go of the world changing. Proves, the world was changing has nothing to do. With no, but because God is continuously speaking the world into existence right. that allows for change but why are you getting why are you bringing the word change in and if it stays the same no, because if you created a minute I, ago the same exact things you created now I, I, well no because that ball has changed position it has changed that's not no it's right air. here this is him no but it's been thrown in the air no this is not this is okay, him but if i throw that in the if air if you don't but now you're not a second okay, ago okay. god created it yes, and it even, wasn't thrown in the air the second later he is changing every second Why, who cares if it's changing or not what does that have to do with this conversation proves that god is speaking the world in creation no it doesn't that every doesn't second. prove anything it doesn't change no his existence no. is the same no and it's thrusted no, by but he, god but it, it doesn't nothing if this exists right here now as it exists it doesn't it's now it's already changed i can agree with you on that but i'm not sure what it has to do with no, what we're I, talking I, about. I think it's genius because it from 360 years ago, it proves 
that the Alta Rebbe understood a physics at the very high end. It's okay. an extremely Could important be. truth of physics. This is brilliant. Yeah. What were you going to say? I want to say if you have a concept that I told you about this once again. So, if you see in, uh, in physics, every moment has a new energy. So, always the summatory of all the things you see. The and summatory of what? All, all the, the, the sum. Or all the, the sum of all the forces. For example, in case you see the ball, you know, there is always a force of going up, but it's another force. You make the sum of both of them, it's zero. So my question to you, when we talk about matter, about you know, what? Matter. Matter. Matter, yeah. We talk about atoms. We start to, to, to theoretically, so what it makes sense when you say that everything is zero, that the moment goes to one side and to the other side, it's like you know, tempo, not temporary, it's like the Everything is exactly the same. It's not a big change in total. It's changed in, in some in some part. So if you, you know what I mean. So when you see every force of a reaction, if you go one side, it's a force of reaction on the other side. Always the same thing. So there is someone that creates the movement because everything is moving. Everything. But also there is the other way around. But you're trying to bring proof that God created the world. I get that. No, I understand what you're saying, well, but, and I understand but, but, what you're again, saying. But, but I'm not talking about uh, being proof that God created the world. We, I'm not. No, no, that's no, not what I'm talking no, no, no. about. Saying that when you say that there is no uh, no change, that everything. I didn't is, say there's no change. No, you, you, you say clearly that everything is remaining the same thing. It's God speaks something. I didn't say that. No, I miss if you did, if you misunderstood. Yeah. But did I say that things for, don't change? Because you say for God doesn't exist. That doesn't mean it doesn't change. What I'm trying to say is it's kula, it has ap it's the the ball that's flying a minute ago was a foot in the air, two minutes ago, two later a minute later is five feet in the air, and three seconds later is twenty feet in the air. That's a change. Mm -hmm. But all these changes don't mean that something happened uh, that the ball is a new existence, not a new existence, a flying ball. The flying aspect of the ball doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. There's a hand that carries things upward. That exists. The minute that stops existing, the ball flows back down. There's no flying ball. The flying aspect of the ball is not an existence. It's, 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 it's created, not a real existence. It was created by a force, by a thrust. It's yeah. not a created. It's oh, if you mean by creation. It's the same. The same. The ball. The ball, of course, is the same. The ball has the existence of the fly. Is not a real existence. Ball will always be a ball, not a flying ball. Right, the and the flying aspect has nothing to do with the ball. That has everything right. to do with the, the the force that's pushing it. The same thing with creation. Let's not get carried away with side things now. The same thing with creation. God spoke the world. He speaks. He says, "He hear a key. Let there be a sign." Uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, a sky. One creation. What's up? He brings that into from nothingness. There's a suddenly uh, a, a rakia, an exist, uh, what do you call it, a uh, firmament, the sky. Or let's say the tree, okay? Bring it closer to us. There's no tree, but before the third day was no such thing as vegetation. Yet, let the earth sprout forth the vegetation. Those words is what, bring, what makes this thing happen. Is what makes a tree happen. It made that thing happen 5,783 years ago. It's happening 5,783 seconds ago. And it's happening now. Right now, Hashem is saying, Let there be a tree. He's saying those words. And if you stop saying those words, there's no tree. There's no tree. In other words, even when he says the words, is there really a, is there an existence of here? The whole thing is like the, the flying ball. It's it's a power that's pushing it into into the upwards. In the case of the ball, there's a force of God, God's speech that creates and makes a tree exist right now. There's a tree because of it. At the minute it goes away, there's no tree. In other words, there's no inherent existence in the tree. If the whole thing is dependent on the force that's pushing it, there's no real existence of a tree. 
But here comes the question that he's going to address in chapter 20. That he said over there in the second section that there's no real existence. But my question is, let's go back to the ball. Let's go back to the ball a second. Uh, is this a little, why is that right? Around? I'll tell you, you get it. Well, no, I was going to say, is this, a, is this a long way around just to say that the ball has no independent existence? The ball has an independent existence. It's flying aspects. They're flying aspects. The flying is a temporary attribute that the, the ball acquires. And then, but it's not, the, the ball not doesn't acquire it at all. The ball doesn't acquire no flying aspect at all. So Somebody flew in the air. Yeah, that's so it. it. The no. attribute of moving at that moment. It's, it's moving it's because temporary. the force pulled moving it. So exactly. the, ball, the ball exists. The ball existed before the person pushed it up also. No, I, I only use that as an example, the See, flying is. When it comes to God, the, nothing exists because the whole existence well, is born. The ball, the world, the sun, the you moon, the ball, it's, it's all like here, one. but it doesn't exist. But no, it has no independent existence. It has, and therefore no existence. What does existence mean? Why does existence It's here, but it doesn't really, what does existence does mean? Existence? The word of God. It's created by him. him. How do you find can... Take it away. I'll, I'm defining. I'll de here. I'm defining it. Okay. Do you exactly the same way you define the fact that there's a flying ball? Is there a flying ball or not? How do you define flying ball? Tell me. How do you define a flying ball? So that's it. There's no such a thing. Then there isn't. That's not how you define it. A bird flies. What's the difference between that ball and that bird? A bird, there's an existence of flying in the bird. It exists as a flying as, as a flying thing. So it exists. A bull. No, you're confusing two things. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. The the existence the example I'm giving is not about the existence of the bull. The bull exists independent of the power that's carrying it upward. It's it was there before. I'm I'm applying the existence of the world to Hashem. Just like by the ball that flies, keep the word existence. In the example I'm giving, there's only one thing you need to keep in mind, the flying aspect of that ball, not the existence of the ball. The existence of the ball has nothing to do with the human being. Before me and after me. I, I, I wouldn't get too bold up with this on this pun or with this analogy. Now that ever does. He likes the ball, the flying ball. Is the He's dog. brought all over the Sure. What is the point? The, the point is to explain in, uh, that the, the world does not exist as a real existence. What do you mean as existence? It's the, just like I said about the on flying own, ball. It doesn't exist not only on the its own. This, the, 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 the ball doesn't exist as a flying ball, not on its own, and not, not on its own. It's not a flying ball. Okay, so no, there's, no such a, a, there's no aspect so of flying in a ball. Oh. So the same thing with Hashem. When you try to say that Hashem is that power that's thrusting everything into reality, into its hair, that doesn't mean that it exists. It, put it, it there, doesn't. In other words, he's carry. He's a force that's that's pushing it and making it happen, making it be, making yeah, it be here. Oh, so that being here right now, you, me, everything, the whole world, is bottled with mitzvahs. It means it's it's nullified. Its its existence is not a is not is kilah. The word in the in the Tanya is kilah choshim. It's as if it doesn't it has no importance. It's more than that. It has no over there. He says it has no existence. It's a big difference between here and there. I want you to I want to point this out. It's extremely relevant. You'll hear the, what the Al Tareb is saying over there that the world doesn't exist as a real existence. As a what? As a real existence. Now comes the other question. Let's go back to the flying ball. Is it important that that ball is flying upwards? Yeah, otherwise I wouldn't throw it. Why would I throw it if it had no importance to me? It does have importance to me. If I took the ball and I threw it up, there's a reason why I did that. It has some importance to me. It has some importance to me. Otherwise I wouldn't do it. You're right, it doesn't become a flying ball, but the fact that I made it go, that I did this, means that it has some importance to me. Otherwise, why well, I don't just do things that have no importance, that have no relevance to me. It has relevance. The question is, you're right. Hashem is thrusting the world into existence by speaking the words, let there be. It has no existence, but does it have importance? Hashem is engaged in doing it. He's doing something. Is it no relevance to him? Does it have importance to him? It is that point that he's trying to explain in chapter 20 and 21 
And the answer is kolach choshev. It has absolutely no value. No value. No value. One right here, oh, that's a very good question. <laughs> this is no a you, you have to stay. You know, you have to do in life before you get to the top rung of the ladder. You got to go to the first step. Then you go to the second. Then you go to the third. You have to understand. We'll get to why Hashem did this soon. We'll talk about that. You got my word. But you have to understand one thing before you go there. The world doesn't exist and that it has no importance. Zero. Okay, before you read this yeah. topic, because yeah. I am confused. Uh, you, it's okay to be confused. No, no. So are we talking about our perception of reality? That that reality doesn't exist? I think the or only are we talking about reality in its absolute universal sense? For instance, from God's point of view. Which from God's about, point of view, obviously. We don't know. From God's, so point, from of God's point of view. And which is the only point of view that counts. But the point is, we, we can't see God's point of view. We can understand it. Well, the point is, if you said to us that our perceived reality that we're seeing here does not exist. I'm not saying it's an illusion. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not going to call it an illusion. I will, no, it's important to make that distinction. I'm, it's I'm not an illusion. I'm going to say, I, I completely... Because we're limited by our senses, we perceive the world in a certain way. We could say we're perceiving it correctly, and we could call that an illusion. But let's just assume. No, I don't think we're. Uh, let's, no, let's no. just assume. It's correct. We're not an illusion. I right. don't want it's you to use that right. word. Right. Exactly. It's I don't want to use the word illusion. Things. We'll just simply say because we're we are incorrect because we are limited. Yes. But I think there's more involved no. because this notion of an independent existence i.e. God created the book, but now the book is separate from God. That's wrong. God created the ball, we threw it in the air. Okay, fine, we perceive the no, ball the God as didn't, flying. The, God, the creation itself yeah. is the flying in the air. When it comes to, when he's talking about God, the very yes. creation is the flying. Well, That's the, the example of the flying in the air is the very creation. But the, 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 but the issue being that creation is not separate from God. That's we not what we're talking about. Well, that's not what we're getting at here at all. That's so, not the so discussion. So before you leave, so I, I, I'm not leaving by the way. Wait, no, <laughs> before you leave this point, though, I mean, we agree that God speaks the world into existence every nanosecond, right? And that if you stop doing that, and if you stop doing that, and, be, and because okay, right. of that, right? Because in, in God, most, my, because my, God has to continuously, right? Because the real, because the ex, the real truth is no. The real reality is that nothing exists, only Hashem. And therefore, only He, through His Word, constantly, like you're saying, every nanosecond, but constantly, oh, basically. Right, like right. the world, that, like the right. force flying up. Okay. It's, every, it's the whole thing. But, that's but, the only reason that it ex, that is here. But you are describing, I think, time. I'm not describing time. Why am I describing time? Because without time, time is also a creation. Time is a creation. Time is also a creation. Time is only for us. He's beyond time. God is a creation as well. There's no time. But the point is, this creation that we think that doesn't exist, that we think exists because we perceive it as part of linear time. I don't think it has anything to do with time. We perceive we perceive that it exists because we feel ourselves. We know we self. It has nothing to do with the time element of it. I mean, I'm not such an expert, and I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. The point is. You have to, you have to, I'm just, this, trying, let's, I'm just saying, how do you make sense of reality? What, does, what are the as, attributes of reality? Time is just a reference. It's not the but same. But time, I, I don't know that, that time has anything to do with what we're talking about. Time is important. important. Time is important because everything is in motion constantly. And God speaks into existence. And this process of speaking into existence every second creates, is, is time. The, yeah, but what does, I, I really don't believe time. that time has no anything time. to do with no, this discussion. No, there's not exist time. Time is fine. Time exists, but just like everything else exists. Like everything else exists. I'm just saying it's just time between God's reality and every reality. It's not really, we just perceive it. Yeah, the, po the, point is, the point is that when you when something is completely dependent, and it has no existence without the force bringing it into reality, into existence, then the existence is all 
it's, the existence is only a manifestation, a reflection on the force that's bringing it. In other words, the thing itself has no existence. It's the thing that ha- the power behind it that has such a power that it can thrust things upwards in the case of the example of the human with the ball or Hashem thrust things into existence. But the, 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 suddenly the world develops and suddenly has a sudden in, in, inherent existence to it. It's absolutely not. Now, that's in over there. That's what Dr. Rebbe is saying in the second chapter, the second section of the chapter. Over here in the, in the chapter 20, Dr. Rebbe is going to add an additional point. Not only does it not have an existence, you could have a non-existence like a flying ball that has importance. Otherwise, the man wouldn't throw it. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's the, the, the flying aspect of it is not, an ex, is not real existence in the ball, but the fact that it's flying right now and is being thrust upward has importance to the person that's doing it. Otherwise, why would he do it? He has a reason why he's doing it. It's relevant to him. The question is, is the world relevant to Hashem? Does it have that importance? You would think it does. Otherwise, why would Hashem get engaged in doing this? He has, there's something in there. There's something there for him, right? He's doing this for a reason. He's not bored. But he's, the answer that the Rebbe is going to say over here that it absolutely is kolach choshim. Kolach choshim means it has zero importance and exi- and and uh, and the value. It's it it has no value. So, but that's that's a mind-boggling concept. If that's they, the case, they, they, then what's going on here? Why did Hashem engage in this? I thought reason for, a reason for living was to create a, a home for God. Here yeah, 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 God. yeah, yeah. That's true. That's talking true. And at the same time, what's also true is that nothing has value. So that's, a, that's a contradiction. We will answer that contradiction, I promise you. But I want you to first understand that point. What does it even mean that nothing has value? How could you say such a thing? Where does al Rebbe know this? Where does this come from? What's the proof of this? The al Rebbe is going to prove it. And he's going to give an example, again, from a human being. So, from human speech, which we'll, we'll talk about in a minute. So the, Not only doesn't exist, it doesn't. It's no, it has no right, importance so, to Hashem at all. So, so I know there were reforms, but so the question here is, why they keep, you know, maintaining the world? You know, to keep Good question. Because if not, if it's not important, exactly. Why are you doing it? Years, yeah. Why are you doing it? Stop speaking and he disappears. Right. Why does he keep speaking? And not only why does he keep speaking, why did he speak the first time? There is, there is a reason. It's not because we have value. It's not because we have value. It's not because the world is, has value. There is a reason, but it's not the, the reason is not because we bring something to the plate. It's not because we bring something to the plate. Uh, why a person throws a ball up? And I can give you a million reasons. He likes to see a ball fly. He's playing catch with someone else. And he's playing ping pong. And he's playing football. He's playing volleyball. He's bouncing the ball back and forth. He enjoys that. It does, but the ball doesn't become a flying ball. The, the flying aspect has no existence, but has importance. Does the world's non-existence have importance? That's the question. The fact that this world keeps flying or keeps being existing or because being keep being created, does that mean that it has value? The answer to that other is going to say no. Let's get into it. So it's not a means to God's end. No, not a means to God's end. A means to God's end means that there's value. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a means to God's end. It, it, hopefully, hopefully to some degree. It is well known. And if you don't get it today, you'll be able to sleep. I hope you'll be able to sleep well. And no, if you won't, that's good. That's good. That's a good sign. If you can't it. sleep because you're bothered by a question, you see this. Answer, you get no. No. then I'm not going to ruin it. Then I won't ruin it. I, that, that's a good thing for you to not go a whole week with pe- being perturbed on a matter of Hasidic <laughs> thought. That's a big accomplishment. That's great. I'm not going to take away that for you. We are not going to answer it tonight. It just means it's going to be fried out in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. I'll find out somewhere. It is well known. No, but I personally, I think it's important. Forget about the God. But here's the base. You want a basic answer? The world has to exist because Hashem wants it to exist, even though it has no value. Now, why would you want something that has no value to you? That's kiloi choshev. It's as if it's meaningless, that it's as if it doesn't exist. 
What has value for Hashem? That's a good question. I think that's the more important question. How could anything have value to Hashem? You know that the, the you know the the, 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 the you know what the, the Arizal says. The Arizal says he talks about symptom. You know what symptom is? You ever heard that word? Symptom, the contraction. Which is a separate subject, obviously. But in order to, the whole world's reality, anything in it, happens because Hashem created. You know, let me not confuse it right now. I, I, I think we're getting carried away. The point is, the point is that, of course, Hashem had a reason for creating it. There's a reason why Hashem wanted it. it not be. a reason. Sorry, not a reason. I take that back. Purpose. Obviously, God wanted it. Let me use the word want. That means he value. willed it. No, no. <laughs> Will by Hashem is not attached to value. Who it's a purpose. That's what, I, it, it's a logical <laughs> conclusion, but it's a lo logical thing. Like you're yeah. Yeah. So I'm talking about for him. Yeah. It has no. Mean? It has no <clears throat> will, and value are not related when it comes to Hashem. You, you have to understand that point. One second. You could, Hashem doesn't have anything from this world. Zero. Because if anything in this world would bring him completion, that means he wasn't complete before. That means it has nothing to add to him, which means it has no value to him. If it has a value, that means he's missing something. So it can't be that he wants it because this fulfills him in any way, shape, or form. He was missing something, and now he has it. So obviously his wanting this has nothing to do with the value of the world. It's that they're not related. Huh? Do you think there will be a time when Hashem does not want the world anymore? No, there's never going to be a time that He doesn't want the world anymore. Not that I mean, right why, now He wants. Why not? Has maybe, no you know, has no maybe, uh, maybe. It has no value to Him. It has no value now either. He is You're not listening. It has, even no when He world. wants it, it has no value. I understand. So it has nothing to do with value. Would you ask me, will He ever time be over time that He stops wanting it? I don't know. Why would He want it? I, I we can we have to talk about that, but it's not because it has value. There's nothing valuable about it. When some does what has what what has value to you? Things that are important makes your life better. Makes your life better. Is is it possible to re, to apply to Hashem such a concept? It makes Hashem better. Hashem is could become better. He's a full, no. he's a completeness of no. better. He's no. Flemus de Kula. He's the most complete. No. Yeah, there's nothing better. You can't make him better. There's nothing that he's missing. You can't add anything to him. So what do you, what, so, so he, there's no value. There's nothing that this brings to him. So why did he want it? Can, can I say something? Uh, there, is, there is a story that I hear in, in a Soar, you know, explanation one day, that he was, you know, the beginning was Hashem, it was all the spirits, all the, the you know, energy together. Hashem's giving everything. And the spirit says, I want to do something else. I want also to give like you give. So this is a reason. He's not doing like a service really for us. Because he divided us in different you know, small you know, spirits. And we are learning. And we are learning how to become better. But he's not doing for him. He's not doing anything. Us. So then I have That's a question true. to you. It's, it, it says such things. But it's not the ultimate truth. When I say not the ultimate truth, of course, if it's, it doesn't mean, it doesn't take away from the, the truth. Here's the thing. Here's, let me explain. What he's saying is that Hashem created the world that we should benefit from it. But he has no benefit from it. That's what you're saying, basically, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. So let me ask you a question. Hashem tells you to put on tefillin every morning. And he tells you to eat matzah on Pesach and to keep Shabbos and to do all these things. Do you think he, he, it's fit that he gets something out of it? No, he gets nothing out of it. It's all for you and for, it's for, for us. He gets nothing out of it. You really subscribe to, to such a... You, you, that inspires you, such a thought? Does that, is that an inspirational thing? Do you believe that in the, deep down? Do you really believe that God came down to Mount Sinai 
and told us to do all these things, and we pray to him, and we serve him, while he says, nah, I don't need it. <laughs> well, I know that's not true, because when we don't do it, he, he reacts uh, bad. That from a certain point of view. But that doesn't person, yet mean, that doesn't mean that he gets, that that's, uh, you know, you can, you can explain that in different ways. The point is, I don't believe for a second that the Torah mitzvahs is ri- only for humans and God gets nothing out of it. I don't believe either. It's not true. So because it's, because it isn't it, true. Because it isn't true. Why would it be good if it doesn't exist? For, for our benefit. You do a lot of things for your benefit, so you no, do no, that no. too. Why would God Because he wants for you to have the best life. So I'm saying, I'm telling you what's good for you. You want to do it, do it. You don't want to do it, don't do it. Uh, I'm telling you what's good. No I don't believe that. I don't I think that's true. Time, you don't believe what? I don't believe that Hashem told us to do this and He's saying, but I don't need it. And I don't, it's not no, for me. Yeah, yeah, we had this discussion. You talked about it. You said we I believe that Hashem does want it. And He wants it infinitely. And He wants it at the greatest essential level. But it's not because we bring something fulfillment to him. So let me let me give you the short answer. You want the real short answer in one line? Yeah. The Medrash <laughs> says, Ms. Abole HaKadosh Baruch Hashem had a desire to have a dwelling in this lowest realm, in a house in this physical world, a home in this physical world, basically. Which was created through Torah and Mitzvahs. So the Alter Rebbe talks about this thing. Why did he have such a type? Why did he have such a desire? What does he get from this? You know what he ultimately answers? If a type is king kasha, when you on a, on a desire, when someone wants something, when you have a type, you don't ask questions. He has a type. He doesn't have to have a why. What does he mean by that? What he means by that is, and I'm getting so off track over here, but. He's so desperate to know the answers, I'll tell it to you, basically. There is no reason, and I say reason, I mean logical reason why Hashem wants any of this. Why he created the world, why he wants Tehidah Mitzvah. There's no logical reason behind it. None that we can understand. No, there is no reason. There's no <laughs> logical reason. When reason means logic, okay, logic. there's no logical reason for it. What is it? Hashem decided that this should make him happy. He decided that this should make him happy. This mitzvah will make him happy. I decided that this is going to make me happy. Once he made that decision, then everything is secondary. Nothing is important anymore. Only that. He decided that this is important to him. I'm going to give it to him again and again and again. Now it's infinitely important to him. But not because there's a reason behind it. Not because there's yeah, some logical reason. It's a decision, a taiva, as it's called. Al Tareb says it's a taiva, it's a desire. A rational desire, a logical desire that human beings could put wrap their mind around it. Absolutely not. How do we know it has no value? You say that it's Well, how do we know this? Al Tareb wants to tell it to us. If we can just allow him to talk the words out, we'll get to the. The but, Rambam says. Yeah, why don't we? Why don't we you're you're, you're ascribing all kinds of things to God here with. with, with I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not arguing with the substance like here, but this is in violation of life. I'm saying we, we can say what God is. We can't say what God is. I didn't say what he is. Well, I'm saying, we said God loves this. God does that. God he wants, wants this. this. He said that because he said that he wants it. I, he said I, that I want it. He said that he wants yeah, it. Yeah, he came down to Mount Sinai and he asked us to do this thing. He didn't ask us to do anything. He to- yes, he, he did. Us to do it. He says, yeah, freedom of choice. I'm so, giving you the Torah. I'm giving you the mitzvahs. You can choose to do it. You can choose not to do it. I'm asking you to do it. So the answer That's is, a fact. There's the not a doubt. Is because I say so. It's not, it, I it, think it's an a priori. It's an a priori thing. Here are Torah and mitzvahs. Yeah. Do them. Yeah. This is what God, we serve God. Yeah. Right? This is what it is. Yeah. It's not about what he wants. It's what he's telling us to no, do. No, no, that's because he wants it. Yeah, 
That's because he wants it. Sure, he wants it. The question is, why does he want I, 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 it? I some say he wants it because it makes him this. Well, some say. Well, some say but the no, I'm talking about sages. I'm talking about. I think we need to go because you say he wants it. Let's say if someone wants something, and he's something interesting. No. No. Zero interest in value. Why he want it? Because he decided this is what I want. It's a taibi. You know what a taibi is? An unreasonable want. An unreasonable want. If you, if you want to say something, you have interest. So zero interest. I, can t I can give you. No There's logic. no logical reason for it. That's what I'm saying. There's no reason that we can attach to it. Because the, world, because the world has no inherent value to it. How do we know it has no inherent value to him? I wish I could be able to get through there this. You know. But our logic says that. I think that's the only we, thing we should be speaking no about reason. now, right now. There's nothing that we can do. Okay, Rabbi, can we continue? It is well known, Siddhartha so starts chapter 20 with the following concept. 83. On page 83. The concept that the Al is going to speak over here is, he's really, it's all part of the Tanya. What's the Tanya? The Tanya said that every person can have, can, can have Tera Mitzvah in his heart and his mind near to everyone in every way, right? So now Al Tarebbe explained till chapter 18, now, why is it near to you? Because all you have to do is create a love in your heart. And how do you create a love in your heart? By thinking about the greatness of Hashem. And that's in your, that's near to you. You can sit down and think about the greatness of Hashem. That will create a, a love in Hashem for Hashem for you. So that it becomes really passion. You become one, become excited about Tehra Mitzvah. And that's what Moshe Rabbeinu is saying. The matter is near to you in every which way. Not only in your action, but even in your love. Then he starts saying in chapter 18 and 19 that a Jew doesn't even really have to create a love because he already has a love in his heart. He has a natural love to Hashem, therefore it's very near to him. You just have to uncover the love. And where do we see that a Yid has the love? Where, because you, you see that, even a, that a person is ready, even, even a, a, a simple Jew is ready to give up his life, Hashem, under no circumstance can he separate from Hashem. He'll go to his death not to give up his connection to Hashem. But al asks, that is very true and all good and fine. The problem is, where do we see? You're right, when it comes to serving idols, a Jew is not going to do that. His love is strong enough to keep him from, from, from serving idols. Well, is it so simple to say that the love, the, based on this love, you should never do any other kind of sin? And you should be always involved and passionate about doing everything Hashem wanted? We, did, we see that it's not so simple. How is that? You bring me a proof that every year the whole matter is near to you because a, a, a simpleton is ready to give up his life for Hashem and not to worship idol. How about is a simpleton ready to give up his life not to eat something that's not kosher? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, so just because he's ready to give up his life based on that love not to worship an idol, does that mean that it's so near to you to do all the mitzvahs of Hashem? I can understand that it's near to you not to worship an idol because you have a love that will stop you from doing that. But is it going to stop you from doing everything else? Is it really so near to you? So the Al-Tarab is going to say now in chapter 20 and next few chapters, the point that is going to be to prove, to really explain how all the 611 mitzvahs, besides the first two of I am God, you God, and don't worship any idols, those are all derivatives of that. They're all included in those two mitzvahs. When you eat non-kosher, is idol worship. You lie, it's idol worship. You do this, you, you, you eat the chametz on Pesach, it's idol worship. How do you come to that? Well, that's the process. And if you can inculcate that, if you can appre appreciate that truth, it'll be near to you. you. Just like you won't worship idols, you won't do this too. It is well known that the commandments and the commandment and admonition concerning idolatry, which are contained in the first two commandments of the Ten Commandments of Decalogue, I am God, and thou shalt not have any other gods. Those are the first two of the Ten Commandments of the Torah, right? Comprise the entire Torah. They are a generality, and in that is included the whole Torah. For the commandments, I am, contains all the 248 positive precepts, while the commandment, I thou shalt not have any idols, contains all the 365 prohibitions. That is why... We heard only I am and thou shalt not have directly from the Almighty. As our sages say, because these two are the sum total of the whole Torah. The question is, we know that it says, The Torah was given to us, was commanded to us by Moses. The word Torah is, a, is an acronym for 611. 
Because God the Torah gave, Moses gave us 611 mitzvahs. He did, he gave us 613 mitzvahs, not 611. The answer is the first two we heard directly from God. Only 611 did we hear from Moses directly. But the other two we heard from God directly. Why did Hashem only say the first two? Why didn't he tell us everything? He didn't have to, because in those two is everything. The first one, Anoichi Hashem Okecha, I am God your Lord, includes all the 248 positive ones. And the, the first of the negative, I do not have, do not have any idols, is, includes all the 365. In order to elucidate this matter clearly, we must first briefly refer to the subject and essence of the unity of the Blessed One, Blessed Be, of the Holy One, Blessed Be. We have to first understand what it means, the concept a little better, the idea of Achtus Hashem, the oneness of Hashem, the, the, the unity of Hashem. Blessed be he who is called one and unique. Echod umeyuchad. He's called Yachid. He's called the only and the, the one and unique. And all believe that he is all alone. Exactly as he was before the world was created. When there was naught beside him. As is written, that was the same error. Error? I don't know what that would mean. That was the you, that was the same ere the world was created. That was before, and thou has been the same since the world has been created. Since the world has been created, no, that's it. It's all just like he was one before. He is one now. Obviously, the question is, yeah, it means before. The question is, how could you say that? Before there wasn't a whole world. Now there is. And this goes further. He says, this means exactly the same without any change as it is written. For I, the Lord, have not changed in as much as this world and likewise all supernal worlds do not affect any change in his blessed unity. But by, by their having been created, ex nihilo. But just as he was all alone, single and unique before they were created, so is he one and alone, single and unique after he was created. Since besides him, everything is as nothing. Verily, as null and void, no existence for the coming into being of all the upper and nether worlds out of non-being and their life and existence sustaining them from, from reverting to non-existence and naught as was before is nothing else but the word of God and the breath of his blessed mouth that is clothed in them. Like he said in the chapter over there in the second section, that since it is only the word of Hashem that brings into existence and, and keeps it in existence and without it it would revert back to nothingness so therefore even while it's here it doesn't have an inherent existence it doesn't become an existed world it doesn't become an existed world there's a, there's a, there's a breath of Hashem there's a word of God that's hammering it into existence, into being, it doesn't become an existed world. As soon as the world goes away, it's over, just like before. That means even while it's here, it's not a, an existence. But the Alter Rebbe over here is going to say even more, not only it's not an existence, but it has absolutely no value, also it's not even an importance. It has no importance either. How do we see that it has no importance? So for this, he gives an example of human speech. And it's a lengthy example. It requires a little explanation. We did a little bit last week, of course. And we'll try to do it again this week, as best as we can. If you have time, it's already an hour in. No, you, you, Let go. What were you going to ask? No, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought you were going to ask something. To illustrate from the soul of a human being. What he's going to try to say, what he's going to say, not try, what he's going to say is that the the spoken word of God is nothing. It's nothing. For example, imagine you know, how long, how many words could a human being say in his life? There's no end. The only reason that ends is because you die. But the power of speech has no limit. It's a limitless power. Power of speech is limitless. So you said a word. You said one word. You uttered one word. Hello. That hello has any value? Has any anything compared to the power of speech which is limitless? 
One to infinity is nothing. That has no value. One to infinity has no value. A million to infinity has also no value. Is a million closer to infinity than one? No. Is one further than infinity than a million? No. How far is one from infinity? It's limitless. How far is a million from infinity? Just as limitless. Just as limitless. So a one word, one spoken word, has value compared to infinity. No. One to a million has value. Very small value. Time away, one to a million is nothing. It's not nothing. A million is made up of many ones. Is the That means that one has some value to a million. Three has a little more to value to a million compared to a million than one does. But when you're talking about infinite number, infinity, then one is not important, then one is nothing, and a million is nothing, and a trillion is nothing. It has absolutely no value. Yeah. What? Got it. Got it. Okay. When a man utters a word, and it's all going to apply to Hashem, because the world is Hashem's utterance. The world is, Hashem utter- is Hashem's utterance. The whole entire creation of the spiritual and physical world is all Hashem's utterance. It's a word. And by a human being, one word is nothing compared to his infinite power of speech. And therefore, a million words that he says is also not, has also no value to his infinite power of speech. When a man utters a word, this utterance in itself is as absolutely nothing, even when compared only with his general articulate soul, with his power of speech, which is this so-called middle garment. We have three garments. You remember in chapter 4 we said we have thought, speech, and action. So which one is the middle one? Speech. So that's the, the, the middle and the middle garment. Namely, it's faculty of speech. So one word, a word has no, has no value to compare to the faculty of speech, which can produce... Speech without limit or end. All the more so. All the more with when it is compared with the so-called innermost garment, which is thought. To it, its faculty of thought, which is the source of speech and its life force. Now compare our spoken word to your power of thought. How many, (laughs) your power of thought is not even, in other words, what's the difference between thought and speech? They're both, you're thinking with words and you're speaking with words. But the words and the thought are much more refined. They're, much, they're different kind of words. So when you compare the spoken word to the power of speech, it's nothing. Certainly when you compare the spoken word to the power of thought, where it comes from, because it's every spoken word comes first from your thought. So over there, it's even less, right? Because over there, the speech is not, it's, 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 a, it's, a, more, it's, a, it's a different kind of word. Different kind of letters, but at least a letter. This is a this is a word, and this is a word. This is a word that's refined. This is a word that's corporeal. But when you compare it back a step, when you go back even more, one step further. Not to mention when it is compared with the essence and entity of the soul. When you compare it to the soul itself, what is the soul itself? The ten faculties. These being its ten attributes mentioned above, this Chachma, Bina, Das, Chabad, and so on, from which are derived the letters of thought that are closed in the speech when it is uttered. So when you trace back the words, <coughs> your spoken word comes to your thought word. Where does your thought word come from? Your Chachma, your, your, your Seichel, and your Midas, your intellect and your emotions. Where is, why are you thinking about this? Because why are you thinking? Because it's for, it's 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 in your it's in your intellect. So it's back goes back this. How much is the spoke one spoken word compared to this power of speech? Nothing. Compared to the power of thought, even less. Compared to the chachma bina and das, the intellect where it originates from, even is nothing. Yeah. For thought can as much be defined in terms of letters as speech except that in the former they are more spiritual and refined. But when you go back, but uh, the ten attributes, Chabad and so forth, are the root and source of thought, and prior to their being clothed in the garment of thought, still lack the element of letters. In that level, they're not even letters yet. They're ideas. It's not articulated letters in any way, shape, or form. 
For example, when a man suddenly becomes conscious of a certain love or desire in his heart, I want something. You suddenly become conscious of it. Before it has risen from the heart to the brain to think and meditate about it, it has not yet acquired the element of letters at all. It's just a concept over there. It is only a simple desire and longing in the heart for the subject of his affection. All the more so before he began to feel it in his heart, all the more so before he began to feel in his heart a craving and desire for that thing. And it is as yet confined within the realm of his wisdom, intellect, and knowledge. It's just an idea. You don't even know if you like it anymore. You just, if you like it yet. You know, it's not even in your heart. It's not even an emotion. It's all the way back in the sword, which is Chabad. Yeah? Over there, it's not. It's, there's no formulated letters over there. So that spoken word is not even, can't even trace it back to a form of letter in, in, its, or, in its real origin. So over there, it's oh, obviously bottle of Vutl is totally not and, and, and insignificant. That is, the thing is known to him to be desirable and gratifying, something good and pleasant to attain and to cling to it. Over there, it's a concept that you should love this. You don't love it yet. Over there, it's, a, it's an idea. It's an intellectual idea. As, for instance, to learn something with some wisdom or to eat some delicious food. Yeah? In your mind, you think there's a thing that you're, you're aware of. This, this is a good thing. Yeah, that's not, that's not, you're not you're articulating anything yet over there. It's in the, in, the, in the realm of ideas. It's in the realm of intellect. And intellect is not a language thing. It's not words and letters. Only after the desire and craving have already found their way into the heart through the stimulus of his wisdom, intellect, and knowledge, and, there, and then ascended once more back to the brain to think and meditate on how to translate this craving from the potential into the practical, with a view of our actually obtaining that food or acquiring that wisdom, it is here that the so-called letters are born in his mind. Such letters corresponding to the language of each nation, employing them in speech and thought that about all things in the world. What the Al-Tarebbe is saying over here is like this. <coughs> I want you to think about this. It's a little a deeper idea. We know already from the fourth chapter of Tanya that intellect, that your chokhmah has garments. What's the garment of chokhmah, bina das, of your intellect? What's the garment of your intellect? Your thought, speech, and action. Those are the three mm-hmm. garments of the soul. The soul is made up of intellect and emotion. What, that's the soul itself, what you want, what you like, what, how you think, what's... And then there's garments. Thought is the garment of the soul, speech is the garment of the soul, and action is the garment of the soul. A garment reflects somewhat that which is enclosed in the garment. Based on someone's garment, you know a little something about the person. There's, there's no real... The, the person and his garments are two separate things, obviously. One infinitely greater than the other. But when you, when, what a garment does reflect to some degree something about the person. So when the intellect encloses itself, so the intellect is thinking about, let's say, give me an intellectual idea. Mathematics, let's say, a, 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 a deeper mathematical equation. So you're using your thought, the garment, to, to articulate to yourself first. And speeches are, you know the difference between thought and speech? Thought articulates it to you. Speech articulates it to someone else. But the, you, you use the garment of thought, the garment of speech, right? The garment has some relation to that which it's, to that which is enclosed in it. So, for example, you're trying to understand a concept. So you use the garment of thought, these words, those words, you're, you're choosing words. Yeah. So the words that you're using, you're trying to fit the intellectual idea into those words. So the garments will reflect, 
there's some kind of relation between the garment and that which is in it, just like your garments. You're wearing a suit and tie, it says something about you. You're wearing jeans, it says something else about you. You're wearing a wedding gown, it says something else about you. Every garment that you wear, the, the, the intellectual idea or the emotional feeling that is in that has enclosed itself in certain words, you're choosing certain words because the words have a relation to the to the to the emotion. For example, if you're screaming, you're such a son. There's a relation between those words and the feeling. They reflect it's, it's two different worlds, but there's some kind of thing. But imagine you finished. You, you, you figure, you know the idea. The idea is clear in your mind. You thought it through and you have it down. You have it a full thing. What's the thing that you thought? That this phone is a wonderful throne. You should get it. You should like it. You should fall in love with it. You went through that whole experience. The intellect has found the emotions, has give birth to, have given birth to emotions for this thing or for this person. Let's say a person. And now, after you finished intellectualizing about it, now the words come back up to your brain to figure out, how do I get that thing? I got to figure out how to buy that phone. Right? So you're thinking, okay, I'm going to wake up tomorrow, I have to go get money to, how much money do I need? I need $1,000. I have to go to the, to the store. When is it open? It's open on Monday through Friday. Uh, whether it's get big lines today, there's big lines on the Black Friday. I'm going to go on some Monday. Going through the thought process of how to get this thing. Those letters and those words that you're thinking of how to get it have zero relation to the intellectual idea itself. I, I want to make a distinction. This is extremely important. I want to distinct, make a distinction. In the intellectual world, there's also letters. Every conscious thought is letter is with, is with words you can't think without words but the the letters and the words the garments of the intellect itself have a relation the human and this shirt have a relation the shirt's going to be a polo shirt is one thing a fancy nice shirt is another thing uh, like i said before those words that means when you're intellectual intellectualizing about a certain thing, whether it's good, whether it's bad, it's going to create a, a loving emotion, it's going to create a rejection emotion, whether it's good or bad, right? The, the words you're using in your mind to intellectualize about it have a relation to, the, to that which is enclosed in it. But once you've finished intellectualizing about it, it, you know that this is good. You've given birth, the emotion wants it. Now you start thinking a whole different a whole different kind of thought process. What's the new thought process? How am I getting this thing? How do I get this? Okay, they sell it in the Apple store. They sell it here. They, they, you can get it cheaper there. You're going through a whole process till you get it. Those words that you're thinking in your mind, how to get this thing, that is not a garment for the intellectual thought, for the intellectual idea itself. That is very much distant. Those are two, that's a different kind of, that those letters and words are not related so much as a garment to the intellectual emotion or the emotion that's going on in your intellect and your emotion. You understand the distinction I just made? What's the distinction between strategy and tactics? No, it's this distinction between the intellectual idea itself. Strategy is already part of tactics. And the words. It's already part of the... I'm talking about when you say strategy, you have to first want something to even strategize about it. I'm talking about in the, in, the, in the process of figuring out if this is good or not. Is this lovable or not? Is this person I'm going out with good or not? That's what I'm talking about. That's the first stage. Those are, first, those are also letters. Those are also words. But those are words that you, the, the intellect and the emotion are clothing themselves in. There's a relation. But now, once you finish, you, you already gave birth. You, have, you know what you want already. Now you're going back up there to figure out... You, the, now, on the, the, the thought process goes, once it already went down to the heart, to you want it, now it goes back up to the mind to start thinking how to get it. That's already a much more separate words, world of words to the intellectual or emotional thing itself. This relates to God, too. What is the speech, the world? What is the, the existed world? 
it's that second phase. This is God speaking of how to get it, how to create this world already. You understand? So where does all this originate? It goes back to the power of speech and the power of thought and the power of intellect all the way back to the essence of the soul. And in that relation, this one word to that is zero, some zero. And we're talking about these words that are not the words that were enclo- that the intellect enclosed itself in. This is already a second step. How do I get this? How do I create this world? That's already a totally, it's already more separate from the origin from Hashem. So therefore, what he's trying to say basically, in a nutshell, is this spoken word is zero value, zero sum total. It's not. Mm-hmm. It's one level. word compared to Asiya level. All levels, all levels, all levels. From creation and on. Where's creation? The world of Bria. Bria and on, let's say, let's say. In other words, this, what, what he's saying, and he's going to say, so in chapter 20, he's trying to explain these two things. Not only does the world not exist, it doesn't even, even the non-existence has no importance. It's zero, some zero. There's only one Hashem, that's it. There's nothing else like a spoken one word. The whole creation is, is a million words, let's say a billion, whatever the word. How far is a billion from, from infinite? It's the same far as one. It's all the same value. Can you explain? But it's a word, it's a spoken word. One a word, it's spoken words compared to the power of speech, to the power of thought, to the power of the intellect. So, it's zero, period. So in, now, if reality is basically what they call uh, philosophy, the imminence, in other words, God creates it. Out of speech, in this case, he creates it. Which is so far from him already. Right, which is far from him. It's not part, no longer. It's not even a garment, you know. Right. And and then your earlier point. And boy, well, but the most important thing of it is, I'm sorry to interject, is that it's like a spoken word compared to infinity. It's right. nothing. That's it. Right. Which is why yeah. this this so-called reality isn't this existence is not only not in not only does it have any independent existence. It doesn't change, and I think this was the point you're making last week. The fact that God brings this doesn't change his unit. It doesn't change God's his unit. unit. He is exactly the same only as existence as, only, as the only existence. The only existence. The only existence. Yeah. And whether this imminence of God exists or not, it doesn't change God. God was the same before. Not only God, was the same, but the same for sure, but I'm saying even in his unit. Yeah, what I'm saying is unity, there's nothing additional now. Unity is unchanged, even right, even though there's even millions post, and billions of creation. Even post hoc, this, 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 this post creation. Yeah. So you why? Because the creation is nothing. It's zero. Right. You can't just zero. And it doesn't zero, exist, it's, and it's, it has zero, zero value. Zero from infinity. It's zero in existence and zero in value. Now the question remains: So in the in, in, so what in the world is all this about? This is his question, everyone else's question. Did you get that? No, no, I, 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 t- I, I touched upon it, and I think it's important because, it, you know, it's an obvious question. We'll, we'll do it next week, brother. No, we'll no. do it more. We'll, we'll go into 21. Next week we'll go into 21. <laughs> He's going to make a distinction between human speech and God's speech. By human speech, at the end of the day, it's, a, it's an existing being. It leaves you, it's, you can't so, take it back, you know, whatever, it's out there. So the world is well. I don't want to speak. It's not. It's not. Has no value because when you compare this world to the infinite world, it's actually when sum you compare zero. God, God, the world to God, it's it's zero. What is it? Sum, sum zero. Sum zero. It's not only sum zero. It's it's zero. It okay. doesn't. It's there's no existence, no value to God. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's, it's wow. significant. Basically, even this non-existent world that he's somehow playing with is also not because that has value. I want a question that yeah. I have because let's say, for example, I have a friend that went to some different school and I talked to him and I said, I approach him and I said, look, look, I have a question. He talks for a few words and he didn't answer me and I said, does that mean it has no value because those few words compared to all the other words? A million words has the same value as a few. Because when you yeah, compare them yeah, both to infinity, so it's nothing to do with the words. As you're talking about the mitzvah of making infinity. someone feel better. You can make someone feel better with words, 
You can make someone feel better with a good hug. You can make someone feel so you bring him food. Whatever it is, yeah. The, you know, he didn't feel you. It's not maybe the words you use were good too. Yeah. But I think the mitzvah over here is not saying nice things; it's being nice to someone through words, through actions, through feelings. Through you know. So yeah, are you asking basically, are my mitzvahs mean anything? Yeah. No. Are they valuable? The words that I said. Yeah. If you made him feel good, of course it means something. If it means it has value to him. It has value to him, yeah. The words that you say, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. You're saying that the words can hurt. I'm saying in, in, to Hashem it has no But the mitzvah. In other words, one second, before we get to the mitzvah. Before you, let's not confuse it. On an intellectual on this level, you understand what we just said? Does it, does it resonate or does it make sense intellectually what we're saying here? What do you mean that? Even intellectually? I mean... Intellectually, I mean, I'm talking about. I mean, Separate yourself from the emotion of it. Could this be possible that God would be doing all this for naught? But first... Know, be, Rabbi, this is an awfully long way to, around to get to the point that... that God... The, 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 this existence, this eminent existence of God has no value the infinite, the infinite uh, unity of God because nothing... Has and, and it wouldn't have to be this existence. It could be a single word. It could be anything, because everything has the same distance from God. It's an, an infinite distance. So, so from that point of view, it has no value and has no reality, and could be easily struck from existence the minute God stops speaking in existence. Right. It was an awfully long way around in Shabbos and Shabbos. What? To, and all the analogies of the ball in the air and. No, the bone of the year is not about value. The bone of the year is about existence. existence. Well, I'm saying it. So if we just simply say, if we just simply, and you got there, you got there, you simply said that all of these things that we perceive in error to be, to have value and to have independent existence, have neither. Why do you say that? How would you get there? How could you explain that to a novice? How could I get there? How would you explain that to a professor that walked in from Novi University? Because I think your average person or everybody in this room is not the average person because if they're average, they wouldn't come to this class. Uh, understand the notion to the extent that it's important. They, they believe the it. They don't infinity. understand it. They understand the notion of infinity, right? And they can understand that, that, that God is not God, the third person. God is the unity of all things, a unity of existence, of creation, and that God is the same before, that God is after, because no, before and after are for erroneous concepts. The uh, fact uh, that you say it's erroneous yeah. concepts. Yeah. Most yeah. people, yeah. you have no, to explain no, no, these concepts. These concepts are not, people don't resonate with these concepts so easily. Well, one second, well, one second, one second, one second. No, I disagree with you. You're mixing two things. Hold on, I want to respond to this. I want to respond to this. That is valuable compared to the universe, to this, this, this vast universe, because this vast universe is not infinite. It's like one to a million, one to a trillion, one to a gazillion. It's nothing. It's not nothing. It's very in. It's very low value, but it's not nothing. One is something when you compare it to a certain number, a finite number. You're talking about these big galaxies and all these worlds. This move, this one little stupid thing is nothing compared to this vast universe. It's very little. It's a tiny bit, but it's not nothing because the mass vast universe is made up of a lot of these. A whole lot of okay, these. Okay, but I think I thought you were contradicting what we had just decided, no, which was this phone. No, 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 I'm talking about I'm saying you this need. phone and this phone and the, the planet Jupiter are both the same in the sense that in an infinite universe, they're both of, of this, they both have the same the, the elementary universe important. Is not infinite. No, it's not. Oh, I mean, okay, sorry. Infinite creation. There's okay. no such a thing as an infinite creation. So creation is not infinite. If God and God and His creation are, are unified, they are they automatically submit to creation. That's a syllogism. I'll be glad to argue that point. It's a lot what do you of mean? Uncertainty. What? 
You mean the physical world is an infinite creation? You mean the physical world is an infinite creation? No, what I was saying is that God, God, that And I'm not sure if that has God, that much to do with if, this kind. You can leave it for later. That's it is, I don't no, think it's it is. God is equal to infinite creation. God is equal to infinite creation. I don't creation. want to say that. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. It is infinite. If God, if God is not limited, right? It is infinite. And God yeah. is ain't so no end, right? And God is not. I'm trying to be, uh, go bomb bomb on this. Be a negative. Um, God is not limited. God's creation is not limited. Why do you, I'm God, not sure what you say. Is this God's creation? Well, they say you everything can't. is God's creation. My mind, he said you can't say anything affirmative about God other than he's Well, is this is if he created this world or not? Well, this is what I'm saying. If, if, That's if, not if, if, phone if, is if, not if, infinite. If, the unit, if, the, if, if God's creation is infinite. And, yeah. and because it is God's creation is part of God. Is, in, is, is this phone part of God? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, but this is not infinite. No. It is. This no. is infinite? No, mm -hmm. no, no. But what I'm saying is the relative the not, relative non-importance of this yeah. is equal to the relative non-importance of the planet Jupiter. I agree with you 100%. Okay, nothing, is wrong, nothing is wrong. Nothing is important. Robert, let me ask you say you, relative Robert, important. I'm not sure why you use the word relative. Because, How many because times? Because you don't really believe that, that it's not. It's not. The, it's not no, important. What I'm saying is that, that relative to the infinite, the infinite, the infinity of creation. Which means that's God's the only infinity. thing you should relevate. It's the only right. thing that's relevant is God, and therefore no, it's I'm not. I'm using the word relevant. My I'm point using the is, word, I'm using only in terms. I'm using the word relevant in terms of its value, not in terms of. Value is importance. Value means it equals importance. Oh, okay. I, you're talking about existence. The existence, the existence of this phone. It doesn't exist. Jupiter, in terms of the, the infinite existence of God's creation, there's no, there's no difference. I agree. Right. Okay. Now, this, what he's saying over here is that this doesn't have its, a, a real existence. It doesn't have an existence. It's, it's, it's thrust into, into, re, in, in, into being because of the word of God, which is nothing, which is nothing compared. Which, which, <laughs> that, which they, the whole entire world doesn't have a real existence because it's all being thrust into being by the word of God. And therefore it's like a flying ball. And top of that, why would God do this? It must have some value. No, it has zero value because it's coming from God's word, which is what, which is a finite, which is, which is nothing. A word is not is not compared to a one. What is a word compared no, no, to infinity? We got that. We got that. So that's it. So that. the, so that's what he's saying. Right? You're saying I could have got there in five minutes. I don't know if you could have got there. In no, five I think minutes. you got there in five minutes. No, you said end. it was a long way to no, get there. To get there, we took a long <laughs> way around. To get no, there. because the Al Tanab is trying to explain why the Torah tells us that creation is through speech. It's and what does it mean that it's through speech? Speech okay. is nothing. That's the point. That as an uttered word is, is zero, some zero. Okay. It's it's got no value. What's one word compared to your power of speech, to your power of thought, to this, to, as it goes back to where it all comes from? Garnished. Zero zero. Wow. Now, again, I, I don't want you to go away thinking that your mitzvahs and he's giving a beautiful example of going to someone and making them feel good with with words and with actions with everything. Those things have infinite value. But not because there's a logical reason for it. It's super rational that these things that Hashem had decided that these should be important to him and infinitely important. Once it's God's importance, it's infinite importance. So anything that's important to you doesn't come even close to the importance of a mitzvah. A mitzvah is important to God, it means it's infinitely important. Why is it important even though it has zero value? Because a God gave it an unrational value. An irrational value, a super rational value. Even though on its own it has zero value. He gave it a super rational value. Uh, it's, it's, it's a it's it's a taiva. That's what Al Tarebu calls a desire. <laughs> he had a desire. There's no why. But once you desired it, that's it. The whole world depends on it. Everything's dependent on it. And oy vavoy if we choose to ignore that that taiva. We could. He gave us freedom of choice. 
but it would be it's a disaster for us and for and for him by the way and that's that gets back to to what you said uh, who said it that there's no real uh, that it's only for us i don't buy that it's also for us yes it's true that we get a tremendous benefit when we do this on a basic human level too but it, don't tell me that god has no 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 uh you say serving god what does serving god mean if you're not really serving he doesn't need this there's a statement by the rabbis that says you know Stabino, if we were told to chop wood all day we would do it do you know why god wanted us for <laughs> i just, I just got telling you that that's, that's, the, that's <laughs> the, the thing is we can't know what God I wants know. with things, so what his reasons for anything. So we, we go there. We could know certain things, well, I but know. ultimately, <laughs> but ultimately, it's beyond that. It's true. <laughs> ultimately, it's beyond that. That's what he's saying. When it says that it's for us, that the Torah was given to make to make people better, that's a true statement. But it's not the ultimate. It's not the end of it. It's not the end of the story. It's not the reason. It's not the ultimate reason. Because One, it's a very big reason. Which, end up with all the logical which is true. Problems. The minute you start to ascribe motives to God, then you got to have to. Dis- then you got. Then you. Got, then you're. Then you're back in the Holocaust problem again. Why did that happen? Why did this happen? You can't. The minute you get stuck in a trap of trying to understand or trying to theorize about the motives of God, then you have to explain evil in the world, and now you got. To, now you got problems. No, no, but I think it's. God says you have to know him, not do him. It's true. Know, you have to know why things happen. Do you know mm-hmm. that some of the Kabbalists say that the reason God created the world was because he wanted creations to know him. Mm-hmm. So he created creations. Mm-hmm. He wanted to be known. So, he wanted to be known. I mean, I, I, that's I why we're here. But okay that's not the ultimate sure reason. Because then he would he wouldn't God create the physical. Because then he wouldn't create the physical world. He would why? create those creations that know him better. See what is the higher level. You always told me that if you, try, if you wanted to know what God knew with the human being, you wouldn't last five seconds before your brain exploded. You'd go insane because you you, you were not God. You could not consider the infinite permutations. No, I was I was saying something action. else. I was actually saying something else. I remember what you're talking about. I was saying that if we found out the reasons for a su- human suffering, we'd be miserable people. That's what we'll, we'll be yes, what? That's miserable what people. Actually, that's much better. We'd be miserable, miserable people. Why? Why would we be miserable? Think about it. What 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 human suffering do you want to know? Give me an example of human suffering. The Holocaust. The Holocaust. Okay, let's say the Holocaust. So you want to know why Hashem allowed it to happen, right? Right. So you, so you really want to know why Hashem allowed that to happen. Why a million and a half children were thrown into gas chambers. You want to know why. Okay, let's say you're a big nudge, and God says, you know what, Marcelo, you've been nudging me the last 20 years to find out why. I wasn't really interested in telling you, but you're such a nudge, I'll tell you. And he comes to you in the middle of a dream and tells you why. And now you know, you wake up in the morning, I know why a million and a half children suffer terribly. What does that make you? How do you feel that day? You're going to go to work? And just, okay, now I know. How do you feel about that? You can't even complain to him anymore. Now you can't even complain to him. Now the next day you go to a, a hospital over here in Cleveland Clinic and you see a little child in cancer with terminal illness and crying and and, and, and moaning and groaning because he's in such pain and he's jumping out of his bed and pain. Shut up. God told you why. You have no right to speak anymore. To, no right to scream at the injustice. It's just. God told you the reason. Could you imagine what that would turn you into? Think about that. I really mean it. I really crazy. mean it. You, I don't know if you'd go crazy. You'd become a Nazi. You'd become a cruel person. You really would. Because you'd see human suffering. You wouldn't care anymore. You would, justify. you would justify human suffering. You would say, it all makes sense to me. Do you imagine people making sense of you, human suffering? What kind of people they are? You know what kind of horrible people they are? The minute human suffering becomes sensible to them and they can justify it, they become Nazis. A lot of humans 
find an, ex uh, an explanation for that, by the way. No, they don't. They don't They're never that. satisfied with these yeah, explanations. They say, well, they're suffering because they deserve it. And they oh, deserve really? It yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, who says that? A lot of people do. That the kids in the Holocaust deserved it. Well, well I mean, but the Nazis say people. that. No, I'm not talking about Nazis. Nazis say that. I'm talking about the good people, people decent well, people. No, no, no. I'm talking about people in general. They also find people it. find rationale for yeah. human suffering? Yes, Terrible idea. That's a terrible idea. You should never do that. You should never.